Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. One important aspect of data science is data exploration to get familiar with their characteristics so we can figure out what can be used and what is missing. Also, no matter where the data comes from, we should never assume that it is completely accurate. The exploration allows us to verify the quality of the data. In this video, we'll use Spark, Python, and a Jupyter Notebook to do the exploration. In a parallel track, we'll see the same processing using Python and a Jupyter Notebook in another video. Spark has two interesting characteristics. It can process huge amount of data and has an SQL interface that makes it easier to manipulate data. The data we are using is a data set of accidents in the Chicago area available at data.cityofchicago.org. The data was exported as a CSV file. The file was then zipped and put on GitHub. The goal of this example is not to show you how to do specific things, but to see what can be discovered while getting familiar with our data. We won't point out everything, but enough to give you a good idea of things to look for. We first verify that we read the data properly. We have 221,600 records and 48 attributes. Looking at the schema, we can see that the crash date and date police notified attributes are strings instead of timestamps. We need to fix that before we move on. Note also that with 48 attributes, we can't easily look at all of them at once, so we look at them in subsets to make the results easier to read. The first thing we noticed is that the crash date estimate has only 16,521 non-null values. This represents only 7.5% of all the values. This seems to indicate that this attribute is not very useful. We also see that the posted speed limit varies between 0 and 99, raising a red flag. The next subset of values we look at has five string attributes. This may indicate limited number of distinct values. This raises questions like, is the attribute non-null count make it relevant? How many different values? Is there a value that could be considered the equivalent of null value? This could greatly reduce the usefulness of the field. These questions are relevant for many attributes. We won't cover them here. When we looked at the basic statistics, we saw that the crash date starts in January 2014, when the date police notified starts in July 2015. Can we assume that they should be within a few days of each other? Obviously, this is not always true. We find that the largest difference is 1,460 days and that we have 427 records that have a difference larger than 30 days. The number of suspect values is not very high, representing less than 0.2% of the values. We may either want to fix the values or simply eliminate these records in the case where we want to use the relationship between these two attributes. Earlier, we saw that the speed limit varied between 0 and 99. This requires more exploration. We find 35 different values. How do we address this? Do we consider 0 and 99 the equivalent of null values? Do we round up or down values so they match more common values? Do we go find a data set that could allow us to correct the values? It all depends on how useful the speed limit will be in our modeling. Another important tool for exploration is visualization. We can display bar graphs that show the streets with the most accidents. We can also use a scatter plot to show the accidents in an XY diagram to get a feel for the distribution of accidents. Also, we can enhance the result by color coding accident by types, material damages, injuries, and fatalities. We can even use machine learning and mapping libraries to explore accident grouping. For that, we can use the k-mean machine learning algorithm and start exploring grouping. Of course, with 221,600 accidents, using 10 groups is likely not the right thing to do, but with 180 accidents with fatalities, 10 groups may provide some insights. Why would you do this grouping? Maybe an insurance company wants to use the closest group of a potential customer home address and the closest center to that person's work address as one factor that impacts the setting of car insurance rates. 
Maybe the low number of accidents in an area could increase house values too. In this video, we saw how data exploration can impact what we do with the data, inform us on the quality, the potentially missing information, and can give us insights on how to use the dataset through visualization. Remember, 80% of data science is to find, explore, and prepare data for modeling. See you next time on Bite-Sized Data Science.